Yo, what is up, guys? I'm playing Talon vs. Dina. So this is actually a post-commentary, and I played this game a few days ago. And that way I'm actually going to be able to commentate and look back at, you know, my mistakes and some things that I do good. And I can let you guys know, you know, what you can be doing in your games. So this should be, like, around Diamond 1 Masters ELO. So hopefully there's, like, a lot of things that you guys can learn from, and I'll make sure to mention everything uh, that, you know, I notice, and that way you can, you know, apply it in your own games and climb up. So here is uh, it's, it's basically a Talon versus Dyna matchup where she's a melee champion, I'm a melee champion. However, she has a W, right, which, as you can see, that big shield. So she's going to be able to, like, win trades early on. And the only, way, uh, only time you should basically look to go in is if uh, she's either used her W or you have a nice, like, you know, you hit both of your Ws and you can get an easy passive proc. Uh, or, like, just like that where, you know, she has no shield and I just go for a trade. But as you can see here, she's actually higher health than me. And I've actually opted for teleport. And the reason is, you know, it's very unlikely that you get a solo kill in this lane. And I usually do go Conqueror, but I wanted to just try a an execute here. I still opted for Minion Dima. As you know, I can still be I'll be able to push the wave. And then I don't really have to lane as long. So I'm still going for the scaling route of going L HQ. Uh but I mean I do recommend Conqueror. I'm just trying something new here. So here I actually missed a cannon, which is unfortunate. But that's basically how the lane goes. You, She's going to be able to win the trades. She like, usually goes Resolve second as well. So she has Bone Plating here. So you shouldn't even look to trade. So what I'm doing here is actually not optimal. And the advantage you have in this matchup is the fact that Talon, obviously you have your E, right? That's your main... So here, so she goes actually, you know, she goes all in. And she pops the Ignite, which I have Teleport, which is actually like a free recall and Teleport back to lane. Which is a good thing, right? So, that's why I went Teleport here. Just because I'm not really looking to kill her and I'm just, you know, somewhat looking to survive and just, you know, farm up, right? Um, so, yeah, I go refillable and long sword, so I get some damage and a nice way of getting extra health. So, as I was saying, the advantage you have as Talon in this matchup is the fact that you have your E, right? And you're going to be able to, like, outroam her. So she can just, you know, she has to just run to, you know, bot lane, top lane, whatever. And you'll be able to get to skirmishes before her. And you can, like, you know, wave clear with your W. She has decent wave clear with her W and Q. But, you know, that's 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 basically how it goes. And then later on, you can you should be able to kill her with Conquer. The thing is, I have LHQ here. So as long as she's not too ahead, or, you know, or even, I'll be able to kill her, so that's no problem. So yeah, I'm actually up in the, the CS. I don't remember exactly what how many CS she has, but I do have a CS advantage here. So she, right, here she actually just goes all in and loses half her health. And I, I'm i a bit crazy and I flash in for some reason, uh, which was completely unnecessary. Uh, I don't remember why I did that, but that's a mistake. But here she, she just came back to lane, right? I teleported, so I'm completely fine. And she already lost like more than half of her health. So this is actually good for me. But here she actually goes for a trade. And she wins out on the trade. And we're both at the same health. And I'm low on mana. But so is she. So it's a weird position now. And I don't have flash. So, you know. There's some things you can learn from this. But also, uh, you know, some good things I'm doing. And also the bad things you can learn from. Like from my mistakes. So here I use the potion, which um, I've been experimenting with. I don't know what it's called. But it gives you three potions, and it gives you a bit of gold, the first one. that helps you push the wave out, because it gives you extra damage to the minions. Second one gives you 20 AD, which is equivalent of two long swords, which is 700 gold, which is really good. And the third one gives you a, a skill point, which you can level up your abilities. So it actually feels really nice, and it gives you that early advantage. So in the meantime, I did recall, and I have a 10 CS advantage here, and I'm about to take this wave. So I'm gonna—I have around like 15 CS advantage, which is really good. So I even choose to freeze a wave, I think, uh, somewhat. I kind of pulled me—I don't—I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay, well there you go. I somewhat free, froze a wave, and Diana actually ends up staying. But the reason I said I somewhat froze a wave is because I kind of pulled the minions into the turret. So maybe I was not decisive in the fact that. Maybe I wanted to push the wave, and maybe I wanted to hard push and bring it to the ta turret. So that's one tip. If you want to hard push, you can actually bring the minions to your turret and like, let your turret 
one shot. It's a hit, you know. It actually looks crazy that I'm hinting and I'm doing a full combo with Maoka and I can't actually kill him. But um, I actually go for that crazy dive uh, and get that goes like get those extra two autos, which ends up killing him. So here I have a 20 CS lead, 21 CS, and I got a kill. And the plating's low, so I can get that the next time I come back to lane. So everything's actually going really well. And okay, here I'm, I was thinking what to buy. And I think I end up choosing Tiamat. I usually don't like Tiamat just because of the fact that it gives you so little, uh, what's it called, AD for the amount of gold. But the thing is, in this matchup, I'm not going to look to trade with her anymore. And even though I'm winning, I'm actually, like, you know, when it comes to trading, I'm still not going to be able to win the trades. So here I'm literally prioritizing the fact that I can just out, you know, out roam her. So what I'm going to do is itemize. That's going to help me do that better. Okay, so... And I also don't have... Do I have a minion D-mat this game? Maybe I did, I don't remember. But I still go for the TM mat here, just so I can push quicker. So here I should just run back to mid. Okay, I am. Nice. So in these situations where your bot lane's already dead or the roam's already basically over, you should just you know stay to your stay mid lane and push out the wave, right? It's the next best thing you can do. So here, once you do push out the wave, then you can choose, you know, if you want to actually go for the roam or whatever but make sure you push the wave first before deciding anything so here i'm actually going for a trade because she wants to run back to lane right i actually have a level advantage like one and a half levels which is really good so as long as i just don't die here we're basically winning right even though early on i was like losing the trades the fact that i had teleport just made me made sure that i didn't miss out on any uh miss out on any gold and XP, and here I just actually get a solo kill. So that's actually how you want to win your lane, right? So you you know you don't have to just level two kill your opponents, right? So in my other videos where I'm smurfing, so this is on my main, right? Or well, one of my mains, uh, you know, when I'm smurfing, obviously I go for that level two kill, right? And it looks fucking cool. But in reality, this is like sometimes how it actually ends up looking, where you know I get a 30, 40 CS lead, and I get a solo kill and a support, and then I kill the laner. And then you slowly win out, and as long as you don't die, basically they can't come back, right? You can just keep out-rotating them, you can just out-push them, you can just clear every minion, you get every single minion CS. So that's that's how it should look, right? So here I actually alt-tab. Um, don't do that, but it's only for a few seconds. So anyways, um, here we're just going to make sure I get every CS here. Let's see if I do. Nice. And auto. Perfect. So yeah, SS mid, right? Darius is going for some plays. Malka is actually moving here too, so I'm not even going to bother rotating, and I'm not going to look to trade on that Dyna. And that's one thing about map awareness is if I didn't notice that Malka was mid, I would have probably you know jumped on the Dyna and then end up losing half my health, and I don't have ultimate, right? And I would have end up flashing. So actually here, uh, it's a bit awkward because I just said that, but. It's the, the same exact same thing that I just spoke about happened. I guess I completely forgot that Malka is still mid side, or I just didn't respect it. Uh, so here I can actually kill him if I play it correctly. Okay, I I um, so I did not play it correctly. Uh, but I could have actually killed a Malka here if I you know positioned better in the bush, and I could have went for an auto WQ. And oh, there's something funny that's going to happen here. So just keep a note of where Maokai was, right? It was that red buff. So we're going to recall here. We're going to run towards the turret. And somehow Maokai is going to be uh, flying into us. So I actually remember this. This is why I actually just mentioned it. But I was kind of surprised that I died like that. Uh, but we still have a 40 CS advantage, uh, which is huge. And two kills. Uh, but obviously, the fact that I died there for absolutely no reason sucks but it kind of got cheesed i guess i really didn't expect it uh Malka does this multiple times in the game which is really weird but that's another story so here i'm actually going for a teleport and it seems that we can't do anything so i just go back to wave clearing here so it's not the best of teleports but i thought at the time i guess that we could do something or i can clean up or get some kills because they were a bit low but i don't have ult and you're my champion without ult is not the best. So yeah, Brand is 
slow setting a bit completely fine so we have what's it called void grubs are up but it seems like we're just going to be giving it up in case they are doing it and if they're not then you know, we can do that later so we can see that Maokai is mid side uh, that might mean that they're on void grubs because usually what happens is the support roams when the, the jungler's doing void grubs that way if anything does happen uh, you know they can rotate so here I can see that Maokai is trying to move so that gives me a suspicion that they're on it and they're not so I'm actually just gonna quickly go for a single void grub and I've heard um, on pro guides YouTube short that giving getting one gives you the most like gives you the most XP so as long as you take one out of the three you get majority of the XP so that's what exactly what I do and here they go Drake and I honestly think I should have been at Drake not at void grubs uh, because obviously that's the bigger objective in this moment but it's fine somewhat uh, so here I think I have enough gold for my main component so I, I should just look to recall here instantly uh, but here I see that Lucian's low so I should have probably had better map awareness here so let's see if I get a kill here nice okay I might have to ult here and then go for an ult attack. Nice. So yeah, I have no mana, but I'm actually just going to get this wave. And the reason is I have Tiama, which is going to help me wave clear. And also the fact that Diana's actually hard pushed this wave. So that just makes it easy for me to wave, like, wave clear under turret. Okay. So there's times when, you know, early on, wave clearing under turret is hard because you're going to get poked out. But in melee versus melee champions, like wave clearing under turret is what you want, right? Because she the only way she can actually go on me like, the, the only way she can kill me is if she's actually gonna hard, uh, you know, uh, commit. But that means she has to, you know, dive me, right? But I was full HP, I just didn't have mana. So here they actually just harden and Jax just ends up auto attacking everyone to death. So we lose first, not first turret, but we lose top turret. And I end up popping to bot side to catch the wave. I don't have ultimate, so. I can't really do much here, so I'm just going to show and try to last hit the minions. Usually, if you have ultimate, what you can do is, you know, you wrap around and you might miss like two or three CS in the meantime, but obviously you kill Lucian, which is much better because you get more gold and you deny the enemy from getting uh, more minions, right? Because they're dead. So in the long run, it's actually better to miss out on two waves, two minions, I mean, and loop around and kill the ADC. So here I'm looking to do something as I have ult. So I'm actually going to E this way so I don't show on the minions. And this is kind of risky. I should have just taken the wave to be honest. Because now I have no idea where Lucian is. So here, Dino is here. And uh, yeah, I, I, obviously I can't one-shot the Dino. Yes, yeah, so I can't one-shot the Dino. So what I wanted to do was a slow combo where, you know, you get the auto attacks in. You auto, Q, auto, ult, ign auto, and then, you know. Use your Hydra, stuff like that. But uh, the whole enemy team was a. Uh... But anyway, back to what the best play was is literally just taking bot wave. I should have just taken the bot turret. I mean, bot minions. Uh, and sort of like trying to find where Lucian was. And I would have already been at like 140 CS right now. So I'm, I'm really trolling. And it's really good insight, I guess, looking back. And you see the, bot, like, the wave bot lane. It's just un like uncontested. So I'm just missing out on XP. And I teleport mid here to look for a play, but the play is already over and we aren't able to do anything. So yeah, I'm actually just trying to find where the person is. There's a wave top as well, and again, I can't find the person. So I'm just wasting more time, uh, which is really not good. But this just shows you that even when you're ahead and you're winning, like, you can always be doing better, like, like you know, doing stuff much better. So yeah, I'm just running around, looping around. Darius is about to push the wave, so I was thinking I could maybe dive the person. But I'm just gonna cast my recall, and that way, if they don't show up, I can just run to bot turret, because Dinah's pushing bot. Okay, I actually stay, and... Trinity is not walking up, so this is really bad. But I might overcommit here, the fact, because... I stayed for so long, but I guess I don't. Okay. So Drake's coming up. 
I should already have been bot lane, so this is another mistake. Yeah, so yeah, she gets the turret. She's really, like, Dinah's really good at taking turrets, right? So, uh, you know, it should, you should be careful of, like, leaving a turret uncontested. So here I can just basically kill her. I'm just gonna save my R, get her low. Uh, combo was, it's okay. Nothing crazy. So here, clear the minions. Now I'm just gonna push another wave. Uh, I might look to recall before Drake spawns. Oh, uh, never mind. Spawning in 15 seconds. So I guess my goal is to just push this wave in and recall, I guess. Why just keep pushing? I guess the correct play is actually just to keep pushing just because of the fact that there's like, no one that's going to contest me. Okay, so they end up actually getting Drake here. And I'm just looking to see what I can find. Lucian's behind, but I can see Maokai is out of position here, right? So... I'm chasing the Maokai instead. He's doing his Duke stuff. And I think he goes, he ends up dying, right? Hopefully. Okay, nice. So Dinah's bot, so I'm just gonna go there. But then I realize Darius is closer to the bot lane. And I'm gonna end up having to defend topside, which I don't mind, but I'm here. Spam being the brand because he's a support and he's taking my away for no reason. And yep. Most of the time, if you wanna, you know, take someone's gold. You want to, you know, ping that you need this gold for some reason. Uh, you know, like you need enough gold for an item. Otherwise, you know, it's just troll. Especially if it's a support. So here I didn't mean to ult stack, I think, in my ult. Even though it looks like I did. So yeah, I end up having to fucking flash here. Um, but what I wanted to do was sim invis and wait for my Q to come back up. So then I can burst him down and then force him to use ult. So against Trendmere, what you want to do is... You know, you can like, use your combo as long as you're you're gonna be able to get out. You want to basically use your combo quickly, just so you force his ult to come out. And some of the time, they actually don't use ult just because of the fact that they don't expect you to use your full combo, right? Because if you use your full combo, they can they can just ult your damage, and that's it. Uh, so I think that actually happens in this game where, but it's like later on in the game where I just use my full combo, and then he doesn't get to use ult. And I'm pretty sure he did have it up. So here I have enough gold to get my ghost blade. But I'm just looking for plays, I guess. Right, so here. Sneak behind. Wait for the aftershock. And uh, he's dead. So Malka is... I don't know. He, wait. He's doing something. But I don't know if it's good. The thing is Malka is really strong right now. And even though he got nerfed again... Uh, he's quite strong still, and all they have to do is basically wait until, you know, they just make sure they don't int, right? And then their team fighting is just crazy. So here I take a wave. I couldn't take another wave, to be honest. But I just go here for a recall, just because I have so much gold. I sure saw my roof fillable as well, but I guess I wasn't really paying attention. Um, so here, Trinibir is pushing this. So I'm just going around. And I kind of wanted to actually jump on him, but I did a melee queue instead. And what that does is it, it CCs you. It's like a self stun because you can't actually move whilst you're, you know, pressing your Q. But if you press, if you use range Q, what happens is you follow the player, and it's better for chasing, right? So here yeah, I find Trinity with my Oracle, so I stop his recall and just get another wave. So here yeah, I can actually just group with my team or keep pushing just because of the fact that I have teleport. So yeah, I'm just, I guess, creating pressure. Training is scared for me. I have Ghost Blade if I need to run. So here I'm looking to do numbers game. What, well, what I mean by that is... Oh, there you go. I got actually aggro from the turret because of Hydro. But be basically, I can keep Trinity bot lane by pushing this wave out. So he is forced to take the wave. And I can just move to my team. So I could be the first one to move. So it'll be a 5v4 temporarily. So here I actually mess up and forced to use my ultimate so i'm just gonna back off here and i'm gonna recall so here this is this is the part where two objectives are up at the same time our support just dies but drake and baron's up so now we have to decide you know where to be right on the map and i have teleport and my ult's coming up 
and Drake is up in 40 seconds. So basically, what I can do is, in the meantime, there's like, you know, 40 seconds to kill, right? And I don't want to just be running around Drake doing nothing. So either I can look for a pick here, or I can just, you know, as I'm doing here, is I went top lane because I have teleport and try to pressure top lane. And that way they have to choose whether they want to go to Drake uh, or onto top lane. And if they go to Drake, then I can just teleport. So here they're actually forcing Baron. Uh, I'm just, you know, chilling, get, waiting for them to get low from Baron. Which, as you can see here, Trendum is just getting low. Mark is using his ult. So, team fighting with Talon, what you want to do is just, you know, chill, stay back, wait for your team to do their things, wait for the enemy to use their abilities, like Maokai ult, etc. And I'm basically doing nothing, right, in this team fight. But I'm basically forcing the enemy to like, run into my team because I came from behind. And now we end up getting Baron. So that was really sloppy from the enemy team, and Maokai is, I don't know, he's, uh, feels like he isn't really doing his job too well. But I think everyone else on the enemy team is not doing too well, so. Yeah, here I ping actually Drake, just because I want to let my team know that after Baron, we can reset and go to Drake or just run there instantly. So here, I just look to go to Drake right now. And the reason is, if they're not respawning in time, we can just do is after battle you can just instantly run to Drake because there's no threat, right? But otherwise, you you know if they're respawning, you need to reset because if if they if it's a five v five, you guys are one HP, then you guys are just gonna end up losing the fight. So here in this case, there was Lucian was the only one who was alive, so there's no threat that so we were able to just take Drake before uh, they respawn. So here I have to waste Flash, which is annoying. But basically, what you should do after you take an objective, you should always like clear the wave. Try to get as much gold as possible. But in this case, I kind of, I guess I was out of position and they were there before I expected. So here I'm not actually going to stay because I can't actually do anything to help because I was out of mana. But they end up winning the fight. I just teleport to the closest thing I can see. And they actually, they actually just win the fight without me needing to be there. But here I'm trying to catch anyone that I can. So we see Maokai. I should probably just press Q instead of W. And the thing with W is it there's a cast time. And I actually just get hard outplayed by this Maokai. Um, so yeah, about that. I should have just pressed Q on the Maokai rather than W. Because I pressed W and there was a cast time. And I was then out of range for my Q. And then he was in Fog of War so I couldn't see him. Then I got baited and Lucian was there and I just died. That was really bad by me. Uh, my team ends up dying as well. So this is all like a snowball effect where me dying ends up, you know, my, my, my whole team ends up dying and then it's bad. There is a split pushing, but, you know, that's obviously not worth it. And what I mean by worth is uh, if I just didn't die, that would have been 10 times better. Okay, so here, um, usually I do raptors here, but I guess I'm trying to look to find anyone I can see. And I guess I, I just end up going for the trend mid just because he's, uh, what am I doing? Okay, did I see someone use the portal? I think I did. Um, but here I just go for a trend mid. The reason is he's just out of position as I was saying. So yeah, I'm just going to use ult so he can't ult attack me. And uh, yeah, he ends up getting me really low, but I can just reset here. Completely fine. So yeah, that's what you want to do when, when people are just out of position or in the side lane. You just want to, you know, quickly rotate to them and just do 2v1, kill them. Then you can, you know, go back to the fight and do a 5v4, right? So here, Lucian... Because he killed me and the other person, now he's and uh, he killed Jax. Now he's really fed. Now he's killing my Swain in the one v one. So that, that's the thing where like making one mistake uh, ends up costing your team a team fight, and then they become strong, and then you can end up losing their game just because of a simple mistake. So here my ult's up soon, 
I just need to be careful because I can't really do much here. I got Belveth quite low and I use E and now my ult's up so I can just confidently chase the Belveth. I'm just going to use my E here, use my ult for the movement speed and we end up killing the Belveth. So that's great. And the thing about this is that my team is performing really well this game now. Um, even though I, early on I had a big advantage, uh, my team, you know, is doing well. So all I have to do is just make sure I wave clear the side lanes and, you know, stay behind in team fights and be in the correct position. And basically, we should be able to win every team fight. So here, as I said, Trinum is pushing, so I just have to answer these calls. But other than that, uh, it's completely fine. So here, I think this is a combo where I, en I end up just one-shotting without him realizing. I think it was. Or maybe it was not this one. No, it was not this one. So yeah, I'm just running away. I don't need to, you know, I don't need to put DPS on the trend here, right? Because Jax is really, like, you know, killing him. You only want to walk back in, etc. is when you, you know, when your team needs the damage. Okay, but in this situation, I was already low. So if I walk up, I'm going to die, number one. Number two, they don't need more damage. I just need to make sure I don't die, right? Because a lot of people, what they do is walk up and then they end up dying and then you get one for one. Like, Trindamir, you kill Trindamir, but then you also die for no reason. So, obviously, that's very basic, but just make sure you don't you know, die for no reason trying to get the last hit. So here, Swain is going crazy, but, you know, that's Swain. And Lucian has a lot of damage, so he ends up actually killing the Swain. Where flash? No, nope. good thing I didn't flash because uh, Belveth you know, is doing her thing. And the game's in a good spot. We just now now need to like you know end up closing out the game. Jax is doing Drake. I could help Darius with pushing, but you know once they clear that wave, there's nothing we can do. So here I take Wolves in the meantime, and then they're still chasing the Darius. So I actually go back in. And Trinimir has no ult from earlier. And, uh, you know, Malka dies. Even though it looked like he had a big shield. That was only MR shield. And me and Darius are AD. So, you know, we have no issue in killing him. So here I go for a Q auto on the inhib. And I was actually going to go away, but it was a good thing that Darius pinged the next inhib. So here I actually, uh, you know, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I can't really help you here. And I'm kind of trying to kite. Nope. And I end up dying. But I got one. I got. I killed one and got the other one low. And Darius end up killing one as well. But here he actually goes down, I'm pretty sure. So yeah. Uh, our team does end up getting Baron. I could have probably played that team fight a bit better. But anywho, we're 10-3-10, so, you know. Uh, our CS has gone down significantly, and that's most likely because of, well, I mean, this is the reason it's not most likely, is that we've just been running around and, you know, trying to help our team and teleporting around the map rather than just sitting in, in a lane and playing the game in a slow fashion. But, I mean, this obviously works too. The only death that's really bad was the one that I died when Maokai cheesed me and Lucian got the kill, as I mentioned. He has 15 kills here, so he's also full build. The, the great thing about it, though, is Lucian, like, Lucian being fed really doesn't matter. And that's just because of the fact that I can one-shot him, right? I have Flash. I have my Hydra. I have Ult. And, uh, yeah. So here's the part I one-shot him. You see? So, this is what I was talking about early on in the, f in the video. Where, if you just use your combo in the beginning, he literally can't react. And even if they do, like... You get movement speed when you use your ult, right? So you force their ult, and once they use their ult, you can literally just you know, run out with your E and then chase them back with your E. So here, you know, Jax is doing some Jax gaming with his intensive auto attacks. I could teleport, but I don't have ult. So I'm, I'm just looking here to uh, buy an item and then teleport so we can end the game. And I think this is the part where we do end the game, so... We're almost there. So we'll go for a flash Q. Very nice. So we do have to kill this Lucian. So I'm just going for... A, even if I go for a one for one. 
Uh, it's very good. So I actually end up watching the replay on this because I was like, why did Illusion not die? And I actually end up using my Hydra and it cancels my ult attack, right? So you have to be careful of that. Uh, it's a common thing. I don't usually do that mistake, but in this case I did and that could have costed us the game. But in this